Hey YouTube, this is Ben Gessel. I, I just can't sleep right now. I'll probably get some sleep later on today before I head to my brother's house to hang out with him for the weekend. Um, but yes, I just can't sleep right now, so I'm going to hopefully make not too long of a video here. And just because of the way that my mind is and the way I am, sometimes if I can't sleep, it's called racing thoughts but I thought I'd touch on something that I've I haven't talked about for a while and it has to do with um, how I see um, people from other countries um, I'm going to focus on East Asia a little bit but I'm going to try to have this a bit more unstructured Still very much in the heart, but also very um, fearless. So, in contrast, or to give this more of a, to give everything more perspective here, I tend to view Europeans um, fairly positively overall, even though I've seen a lot of, heard a lot of behaviors from folks in Europe that, on YouTube at least, that is less than positive. So, my heart wants to like Europeans, but my mind says that they're pretty much the same as people over here in the United States. And with regard to Africa, I just think that a lot of folks in Africa are still somewhat cut off from the rest of the world. And those that are not less cut off have less stuff in general, which means that either they're going to be, well, you know, it's just a different kind of area. It's rare that you meet someone from Africa that's affluent by Western standards, but so either they're still great people or they, I don't know. It's just different. And I have so much less exposure to Africa. African Americans being different, of course, somewhat. In Latin America, I also see a pretty, pretty positive light overall, but yeah, less, less stuff, I know. And of course, you can keep going. I guess it's all in contract. This is all good give this perspective um, Middle Easterners I think are uh, if they're in the old world they're sometimes in this Muslim bubble of thought and many of them are trying to break free from that tradition and yeah I, I understand on some level how folks are from Iraq, Iran, and Saudi Arabia. Okay. Even though, again, it's limited. Um, India, I understand better with knowing more people from India as well. So when it comes to places like China and Korea and Japan and Vietnam and Cambodia and Thailand and Laos, these are all very different countries, Mongolia. I've understood over time the similarities and differences they have. And um, here we go. Without any further ado, let's get into East Asia. Well, it goes without saying that Japan is very clean and organized. And you don't really see anything very much different from folks over here in the United States that are Japanese ancestry. Um, they kind of make the, a lot of other folks from Asia seem dirty by comparison. And I'd like to just dwell on the positive things, of course, but um, unfortunately, I 
You just can't do that. But when it comes to Japan, I'm already so familiar with, I don't know. I guess the best way of putting it is that in Japan, and this is also somewhat the case with other countries in Asia, it's a really, 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 really big deal. It's a paramount, a paramount importance that you act in certain ways around certain people in certain situations. And then when you're around other people in different situations, you can speak more freely. That's the best, that's the best way of putting it. And there's all this stuff. There's all these unwritten rules and social etiquette kinds of things that in all honesty is very similar to England and Europe. And I've always seen that similarity between East Asia and Europe. This is one of the reasons why East Asians seem to like Europeans and their cultures because they have this formality especially when it comes to places like Japan. It's of course the militaristic side of Japan. And all that, which you know that the next train of thought there is either going to be, you know, the samurai or pure imperial Japan or martial arts or something, but I understand all this as well. Very much so. And so overall, I think as most Westerners go, we tend to view Japan pretty favorably and highly. It wasn't always the case, of course. I'm very, much familiar, I'm very, very familiar with earlier ideas of Japan. And um, if Japan was less friendly to the United States, I suppose that would factor in here somewhat. But if they never became buddies with the United States, but you can't. You cannot deny what is truly of the essence of Japanese culture, whether or not they're friendly to the West or not. And so, well, again, my gut feeling has always been very positive toward Japan. But um, this is a nation where, at least traditionally in the past, uh, you knew where you stood. They didn't make any beef about it. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't make it confusing um, at any point in time. You knew where you stood with different people. Even if they wouldn't say much, but they would look at you in certain ways. That's the best way of putting it, I think. And like many Asians, many other kinds of Asian countries, there's a lot of, and like other people in general, people, other countries in general, look, even though, again, the Japanese view Westerners and white people fairly favorably overall, that's the overall impression, initial impression is a bit more favorable, there's still some anxiety and whatever else going on, of course. So, that's not really the case so much in the United States, but if you if I went over to Asia, I imagine that um, you know I'd probably get a little bit more of a dosage of what Japanese actually think about white Americans, which again I think is pretty positive, but for various reasons, some of which I know of, and you know it's probably going to be a little bit of the. Um, well, we're Japanese, you're white, kind of, at some point, for a lot of folks. But this this trend, and I, let me progress to some other nations here in a bit. So, is there warm-hearted feelings? Are there warm-hearted feelings? Yes, of course, I like Japan. I always have. But, you know, when I was a boy, I, I used to think in terms of karate and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And maybe Kimotos or something. Yeah, I didn't even about kanji really. I kind of knew about that stuff. As the older I've gotten, the more it's taken on. I've just learned more. 
knew more people. Most people I knew who were Japanese were American. So, and I had a, a friend, actually, a buddy of mine, when I was in elementary school, who was Japanese. So, his mom was Japanese, dad was white. Half Japanese. Okay. Going on to Korea. Well, goodness. We're starting to get more into orchestra mode here because so many people I've known from Korea and China and Vietnam, especially Korea and China, are either pianists or string players. I know. Just the way it goes. They're violinists and violists. And, well, more cello, but more violin. A few others. And lots of cute Korean girls I knew when I was younger. And some still, yes. Goes without saying. And there's a lot of things. In Japan, for instance, there's anime is a pretty big deal. And, you know, there's kind of a cutesy thing they have going on there, which they have some funny things going on in Japan that I'm aware of that are just really, oh, I don't know. Basically, the samurai would be ashamed <laughs> a little bit. But that's probably a little bit of a severe rebuke. But yeah, modern, modern Japan with the, the cutesy thing. It's, it's very different. <laughs> I don't know. In my estimation, in earlier Japan. But in Korea, it's something similar to that going on, I suppose. But it's... This K-pop thing is weird because I understand quite a bit about what's going on with K-pop, more than you guys probably realize. It's not just for music students that are Asian. It's a lot of stuff. Um, whenever I've played classical music, where I've played a more sent an emotional piece of music, um, if somebody's a girl, say, from Asian countries that are often very likely to listen and like it quite a bit on some level. This is almost a, a culturally trained thing, I wonder. I mean, I, I, I'm not really sure offhand how much it's an intrinsic thing or how much it's a, a, a taught thing. But it goes without saying that you have these very same similar qualities in, say, in Europe as you do in Asia with regard to this kind of music. It's not just those two countries, it's not just two areas. There's certainly other areas of the world that are like this, but they pay attention, you know, which is cool. You know, they like it. And again, with Japan, I have a lot of good things to say about Korea. And I've known a lot of people from both Japan and Korea, whether or not they were actually from those countries or they were Japanese American or Korean American. Um, but with Korea, you know, South Korea, of course, being somewhat more like Japan, which they would probably, that's probably get a mixed review, mixed emotional response to that. I understand the two countries to be very distinct as well, but uh, South Korea, of course, being more allied with the West, North Korea being, of course, we keep filling the rest. And that rhymes. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, Korea is, it's easy to see Korea as being crossroads between China and Japan. I know it. That's they would not like that either. Touching all these things that Koreans wouldn't like to hear. And so with the older generation of Koreans, there's still a beef with Japan. I understand what it is. Won't get into that. It's very sensitive, to say at least. And so, um, but yeah, that music thing is a really big deal, and working your butt off. Of course, it's always, you know, it's a big deal. I mean, I mean, really working your tush off and in a saving face and not doing anything to besmirch the family name and honor and stuff. Yeah, that's a big deal. And so, again, just like Japan, that's why in Korea you have people that have a lot of pressure to act in certain ways around certain people and then when they're around other people, they act in different ways. and You see the same thing throughout the world in some respects. It's not just Asia in this regard, but it's a, a big deal to not 
offend your parents. It's a very big deal. Ancestors, relatives, and things. It's the same deal with us, United States, white or it's it's a worldwide it's a worldwide thing. But I suppose when we're talking when we're talking about Asia, it's the severity of what happens if you besmirch the family name. So there's a lot of in Korea. There's a lot of you know conflict between how to deal with things from the West and from white or black Americans or whoever, whichever other country. Some people call it xenophobia. There's a lot of confusion, a lot of uncertainty regarding, at least in that state, well, among younger generations of Koreans regarding how to, what to say, what to do. You know, do you marry someone outside of being Korean? That's a, it's a big freaking deal. Um, same deal in Japan, but in Japan, I think it's, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's greater familiarity with the West or whether it's, I don't know. I, I don't, I often see, feel like it's a bigger, it's a bigger conflict going on in Korea. And China is still on some level very isolated from the West and the larger world. So maybe I picked, picked on Korea enough, but there's still quite a bit more about Korea that I understand and like very much. But um, I, I can't say it's all very positive. But again, just like Japan, it's mostly positive. It's I don't want to ha- I don't want to have any negative feelings toward any country. Um, but I do understand the beefs that some people have about Korea. And just to put this in perspective, I I knew a young woman who had both German, Filipino, and Korean ancestry, and of her own ancestry, and how she sees us, these countries. Korea is the least favorite country of her ancestry. Then the Philippines is in the middle, then Germany was her favorite. And she kind of told me why. And we don't have to get into the way that Asians treat retail workers. I think that's pretty common knowledge, at least the, the trends, right? The tendencies. We understand this pretty well, I think. If we have been on the earth for longer than a dozen years or so, or up to the teens, we see this in some level. I will we'll say, it certainly seems to be on 20 years old. In that general range. So, we don't have to talk about that. And we don't have to talk about, you know, the fact that a lot of Asians are prone to stereotypes more than most folks. I mean, the way that they see other people, you know, and there are reasons why that is. But, you know, it's hard to speak your mind, I think, in general. It's hard to feel confident to speak your mind, to really truly speak your mind. Uh, especially with the tribe of China, but I think it's Japan is of these countries the most people are the feel like probably the freest to speak their mind because it's a democracy, right? But knowing the Japanese people, these are people that are most likely to truly speak their mind to to me to anybody if asked a question about something. They're probably the most straightforward, but they're going to do their best to try to be polite about it. You're going to be hard pressed to find a more polite society than Japan, and some on some level, very very respectful people, I think. And so yeah, I mean, it's hard not to like Japan. In fact, you kind of kind of feel a little bit callous compared to the Japanese at times. <laughs> you talk about the arts and talk about the refined stuff and. Japanese gardens and all that. Again, the cleanliness and orderliness. You can feel a little bit wowed by Japanese, but it's also kind of a their efforts to put the best foot forward sometimes. Yeah. Korea is really similar, but different. Again, you know, you just, you know a lot of times that Again, just, you know, again, I keep seeing these connections with 
Haitians my own ancestry in Europe, but it's the parents are really, really um, a big deal. And the biggest thing about coming to the United States is that the United States is always in the West is with some exceptions, not as parent dominated. <laughs> I still put it that way. The parents seem like tyrants to us. When we hear about parents over in China and stuff, and in North Korea, they seem like tyrants to us sometimes. But it wasn't all that long ago that European parents were kind of similar too in that regard. Again, you still have some some places where people from European backgrounds are still really controlling. <laughs> Conservative in the extreme sense, traditional and all that stuff, right? Okay. See that how you want to. So China, well, China, gosh, what can I say? It's almost like it's such a big country. It's like, like the United States is hard to sum it up. But, you know, talking about Korea here for a bit, uh, China is not that much of a, I mean, you're northern China, right? Is people often have the idea of this idea that women and men are kind of more uh, macho, bigger, they're just bigger physically. They're lighter skinned than the southern Chinese, it's true. They're more Mongolian, they're more northern Asian, so they have bigger bodies, you know, a lot of times they're taller. And they're going to probably be a bit more assertive in some respects, even aggressive. Uh, but I don't know. I'm like, so it's true. I, I mean, as far as folks I've known from China, I think the majority of them have been from southern China rather than northern China. The northern Chinese to me seem more like the Koreans in some respects. But um, everybody knows that, well, okay, I'll put it this way. Of all the countries in the world, China is one of the top three, if not the top country where people are, are paranoid to say what, what's on their mind. Obviously because it's Be Beijing. We all know that. They have this social credit system that's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> so there are a lot of things that are very foreign to my thinking about Beijing and the way Beijing is. Much more foreign even than the old communist Russian government, Soviet Union. It's it's very foreign to my thinking for someone to be so... Well, I don't know. We won't get into that. But I would just recommend watching Serpenza's channel. S-E-R-P-E-N-Z-A. So obviously I, I love Chinese people in general. Sure. Absolutely. But it is not, it's, definitely, it's definitely not North Korea's government. And it's definitely not Beijing's government. You know, I don't like communism. But um, communism seems to kind of keep a lot of the riffraff in the West away, at least. Which is interesting. <laughs> uh, riffraff meaning, well, you think, I think you know what I mean. But all the evils of Hollywood and all the, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff. And look, um, everybody from, there we go, I know I talk about this on some level, oh boy. Well, Putin has talked about this, yep, not just Hollywood, but also all the crazy stuff happening in the West, and political correctness, and the Chinese premier, I can't remember his name right now, I uh, would probably say the same thing, they say, you know, this is why you know, the West is evil. and you know. Well, you know, they're going for the cheap shots. They're not showing pictures of Select Temple. They're not showing, you know, the good side of the West. Of course they do that. They want to keep <laughs> their regime in control and power, right? If you're going to have... This is one thing about the United States that at least Beijing has to realize. You cannot have a nation of over 300 million people armed as we are and as fiercely uh, committed to liberty as we are, even if it seems like we're not as much anymore. You can't have a nation that big, that much energy, that much people, 
that just will say, oh, we're so afraid of Beijing and the social credit system, we don't want to be on Beijing's bad side. You know, Beijing, it doesn't work that way. You know, when you have, it's not the fault of the Chinese people at all, but when you have this, you know, factory, Amazonian, <laughs> I say Amazon, the company, not Amazonian Brazil, but the way the Amazon is, when you have a tyrannical, a tyrannical government and you have, um, you're work, overworking everybody and people aren't getting paid crap, you know, everybody's peasants basically. And, well, you know, you can't put up uh, camo, camo, right? You can't conceal what's going on in your country for ever you know and so i i just think everybody is very aware of beijing and we obviously don't like beijing we try not to, we try not to let it affect how we view chinese people and chinese americans i know it's they're americans and whatever but it, it's if anybody's going to have any beefs though <sighs> amongst the asians you know, it's probably going to be the Chinese more than the Koreans or Vietnamese or whoever else or Cambodians. And believe me, I know that each of these nations have their own beasts with each other. I understand that increasingly so. But um, China's got a lot of this bad thing going on, bad mojo because of Beijing and because of what Beijing is going to do to people that on the lower end of the social credit system. And of course you have Jackie Chan and I love Jackie Chan. And he's, he has mentioned, yes, the United States government is far more corrupt than Beijing. We know that Jackie, we know that it's just that for some reason we still are able to kind of live our lives without, um, fully being aware of all that stuff. So, you know, I mean, believe me, I understand this very, very well. It's just that, well, how can you blame me? We were kind of taught from a young age that communism is wrong, and it kind of is. It's totalitarian, at least. But, you know, Marx had some good ideas. It's just, yeah, well, that's it. we're talking about government here. I'll we'll save this for another time, but getting back to China for a bit, most I mentioned most of the people I've known from China are from the South. Southern Chinese kind of like the Vietnamese and basically I'm going to talk about Hong Kong and stuff, which more of a merchant driven society, you know, it's just different. I don't know. People are, I've known a lot of sensitive girls from Hong Kong, Hong Kong background, petite, very, very kind, sensitive girls and women and just really polite, people it's a different vibe than <laughs> um a lot of the inner the continent and china i'm not saying anything bad about mongolia i'm just saying mongolians in my estimation are a lot more like you know central asians and russians and european-ish they're just you're they just you know there's Kind of, it's Asian, but they're like, I'm not saying they were macho. I'm just, mm. when it comes to folks like the Southern Chinese, the Cantonese, right? Uh, it's not just that they're shorter. We see these things in general. It's not just that they're more, I don't know. I often feel like I want to just say, it's okay. Everything's going to be okay. You know, just, you know. I do feel a need to kind of look out for them, be buddies with them. Um, I like the folks from Hong Kong very much. I understand that some of them could kick my butt like Bruce Lee. I understand that, right? And you want to avoid thinking about all Southern Chinese as being short and, and shy and things and easily taken advantage of. But you want to try to avoid that because they probably don't like that. <laughs> but it also means that Many of us see, oh, I don't know, I won't get to this too much, but um, it can be a very good thing for us. It's just, 
I have on the musical end, I've, I'm very much increasingly familiar with uh, how um, actually hardcore and really scary hardcore uh, folks from Hong Kong can be about piano and music and how we all understand that in East Asia, music, amongst many other things, are taken very seriously a lot of times. And if you aren't making the grade, quite literally, you're going to be in big trouble. So I understand that bit about Hong Kong culture as well. So again, with China, my overall feeling is, yep, of course I love the Chinese. Nope, I don't like Beijing. I don't think many people do, and I think they can just, you know, deal with it until we overthrow the government there. But anyway, getting on to Vietnam. This is getting kind of long. I'll probably have to make a part two. Talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye.